Taylor Swift can write one heck of a love song, but she's also really, really good at writing music about stuff in general. Though T Swift became known for writing songs all about the fellas she's dated, let's not forget about those tunes that have been reserved for things like friendship, family, frenemies, and everything in between. And that's what has swiftly brought us together today, Swifties, as we're serving you 13 of the best Taylor Swift songs that aren't about her ex-boyfriends. Coming in at number 13, we have The Lucky One, which is a track off her 2012 album, Red. This one is a cautionary tale about the price of fame and what happens when someone finally achieves it, something Taylor knows quite a bit about. It's also reflective of Britney Spears' song, Lucky, and how someone can have fame and fortune, but also feel alone at the same time. The Lucky One centers on a star who becomes world famous, but then disappears, with some speculating that it's actually about singer Joni Mitchell. Plus, Taylor said in numerous interviews that Red was heavily influenced by the folksy singer, so maybe. The song features lyrics such as, They say you bought a bunch of land somewhere, chose the Rose Garden over Madison Square. If we know one person who is a pro at navigating the insane entertainment industry, it's Taylor. Landing the number 12 spot, we have Sweeter Than Fiction, which Taylor penned for the 2013 movie One Chance. The flick is based on the true story of Paul Potts, who became an unlikely star thanks to competing on Britain's Got Talent, and Taylor's poppy anthem served as the song's main theme. Sweeter Than Fiction is an uplifting tune, and some of our fave lyrics include, Wish I could make it better, someday you won't remember, this pain you thought would last forever and ever. Moving swiftly along to number 11, pun intended, we have one of Taylor's newest songs, a tale of friendship gone terribly wrong. Yep, it's Bad Blood, off of 1989, which is the newly crowned ultimate frenemy anthem. Taylor teased the song in a Rolling Stone interview, saying she wrote it about a fellow pop star who tried to sabotage her Red Tour, who many believe to be Katy Perry, after she tweeted about Regina George in Sheep's clothing. The song itself is so insanely catchy and reminds us of a modern day Pat Benatar track, that's a good thing. Just listening to the lyrics from the dancey pop song, it's clear some crazy stuff went down between these two. Band-Aids don't fix bullet holes, intense stuff. Another song Taylor wrote for a movie that ended up wowing fans was Safe and Sound from the Hunger Games soundtrack, and that lands the number 10 spot. This slowed down track is a tale of survival, quite literally, and fits in perfect with the theme and plot of the mega blockbuster movie. Just close your eyes, the sun is going down, you'll be alright. And you know what? The way she sings it, we believe her. For the number nine song, we have The Best Day. So Taylor wrote this song for her own mom, Andrea, and just listening to it will make you want to call up your family and tell them how much you love them. But I know I had the best day with you today. This song was featured on Taylor's 2008 album, Fearless, and beautifully tells the tale of growing up alongside your mom and how you never stop needing her with lyrics like, and I love you for giving me your eyes, for staying back and watching me shine. It's no wonder Taylor said her mom still cries every time she performs it. Um, we don't blame you, Mama Swift. We're tearing up over here ourselves. Next up at number eight is Long Live, which is part of Taylor's 2010 album, Speak Now. Long live, long live. She's described this slowed down song as a love letter to her band but could also be interpreted as a song for anyone moving on to a new chapter in their life, you know, like high school or college graduation. So in Long Live, Taylor sings, I said, remember this feeling, I passed the pictures around of all the years that we stood there on the sidelines wishing for right now. I mean, if you didn't blast that song on the way home from graduation or you don't plan on doing so, you're doing it wrong. Coming in at number seven, we have 1989 track, Welcome to New York, which perfectly captures Taylor's big move to, you guessed it, New York City. Welcome to New York, it's been waiting for you. Welcome to New York, welcome to New York. Taylor has mentioned on more than one occasion how much she's been inspired since living in the Big Apple, so this song comes as no surprise. To quote Taylor in this song, it's a new soundtrack, I could dance to this beat forever more. And that's exactly how we feel about Welcome to New York. It just makes you want to turn the world into your runway and look at everything in a new light. Landing at number six, we have the haunted ballad, Ronin, which was a charity single. Taylor was inspired to write this song after reading a blog about a four-year-old boy named Ronin who died of cancer. 
she actually teamed up with Ronan's mom to pen the song that features powerful and heartbreaking lyrics such as, come on baby with me, we're gonna fly away from here, you were my best for years. If that doesn't make you tear up, I honestly don't know what will. Throwing it back now to Taylor's very first album, we have A Place in This World coming in at number five. This song is obviously very country centric since that's how Taylor started out and it's about a young girl trying to find her path. Taylor wrote the song as a teenager and was already penning poignant thoughts such as, I'll be strong, I'll be wrong, oh, but life goes on, oh, I'm just a girl trying to find a place in this world. Safe to say, Tay Tay's found her place and it's as one of the biggest pop stars on the planet. Now, if Bad Blood was the ultimate front of me song, our number four is the ultimate bestie song. And that would be 22 off the Red album. It's the perfect song to blast with as you're having a dance party, a summer party, or just a girl's night. Taylor sings you lyrics like, we're happy, free, confused, and lonely at the same time. It's miserable and magical, indeed. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. At number three, we have Neen, which is the perfect anthem for anyone who's ever had to deal with haters. This was featured on Speak Now, and she said she wrote the song for all her critics out there. In an interview with E! News, Taylor said this, there's constructive criticism, there's professional criticism, and then there's just being mean. And there's a line that you cross when you start to attack everything about a person. And with lyrics like, someday I'll be living in a big old city and all you're ever gonna be is mean, I think the icing on the cake for this song is the fact that she won a Grammy for best country song. Haters gonna hate. All right, we're getting down to the wire, you guys. We have Taylor's the song, Starlight, at number two, off of Red. Okay, so it's technically about love, but the love of Ethel and Bobby Kennedy. She was inspired to write the song after seeing a photo of the two political figures dancing as teenagers and subsequently dated their grandson, Connor Kennedy. The song features lyrics like, we were 17 and crazy, running wild, wild, can't remember what song it was playing when we walked in the night we snuck into a yacht club party pretending to be a duchess and a prince. You just sang that in your head with me, didn't you? Sounds like they knew how to party. Oh, and P.S. When Taylor released Red, the secret message for this song was for Ethel, so that about sums it up. And landing the number one spot on Taylor's best songs that aren't about her boyfriends, 15. But I didn't know it, 15. This song was on Taylor's Fearless album and tells the tale of innocence lost and was inspired by her best friend Abigail and a relationship she had that went too far too fast. The first lyrics Taylor wrote for this song were, and Abigail gave everything she had to a boy who changed his mind, we both cried. Who can't relate to something like that? See, you guys didn't think we could do it, did you? So what is your favorite Taylor non-ex-boyfriend song? Start the convo in that crafty comment section below. Then click here to get our breakdown of the absolute best songs on her brand new album, 1989. And don't forget to subscribe while you're over there. I'm your host, Misty Kingma. Thanks for hanging out, Swifties. I'll catch you later.